Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. Tonight we're talking about standard enthalpies of formation. Now, with standard enthalpies of formation, we can do a number of different problems. So what we need to be able to do at the end of this podcast is we need to be able to identify formation reactions, which take a very definite form. And we also are going to complete a model problem to um, use the heats of formation to solve a Hess's Law problem, which is the usual way you're going to find yourself using heats of formation. So when we talk about a standard enthalpy of formation, or sometimes people say a heat of formation, although enthalpy is really the better term, this is the type of notation that we use. So the delta, of course, means a change in enthalpy, because we can't measure enthalpies directly. We can only measure changes in enthalpies. The subscript F here means formation, and the superscript naught means that we're at standard states, which is sort of the usual state of matter found at about one atmosphere of pressure and 25 degrees Celsius. Now the definition of a standard enthalpy of formation is the change in enthalpy when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements in their standard state. Now for our purposes, we're really only going to be encountering elements in their standard state anything else would be quite unusual for our conditions. So this is an example of a typical formation reaction. I'm making one mole of the product. All right, our coefficient here is one. All right, and we're making it from its elements. Uh, and the amount of energy involved is the uh, enthalpy of formation. Um, one thing I do want to point out is we do sometimes end up with fractional coefficients when we're doing these enthalpies of formation because we are, we are limited by this rule of making one mole of a compound, and so that frequently works out that way. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that the heat of formation or the enthalpy of a formation of an el element in its standard state is always zero. So, you know, if you're talking about solid sodium, it's going to be zero. However, if you've got liquid sodium, it wouldn't be zero. But we're talking about standard states here. Um, gaseous diatomic oxygen would have a feed of formation of zero. And you are expected to know that when you're doing these problems. The other thing I want to point out is that you, um, a lot of times this data will be given to you in a table. You're not expected to know these off the top of your head, obviously. Um, so when you're doing this, the table may not include any information about the elements, and that's because you're expected to know that the heat of formation of an element is always zero. All right. Now when you're calculating enthalpy changes, the general process or the general strategy is that you, the overall enthalpy of reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpies of the products minus the sum of the enthalpies of the reactants. Now, enthalpies, of course, are extensive properties, and so we do need to take the coefficients into account. All right. And so when you're doing this, you do have to you know, multiply the value by 2 or 3, whatever the coefficient is. The other thing is that, oops, the other thing is you do have to start with a balanced equation, otherwise you won't know what those coefficients are. But this gives us another strategy for solving Hess's Law problems. So I'd like to do a practice problem here. And the problem is, using enthalpies of formation, calculate the standard change in enthalpy for the thermite reaction. So we want to know the overall energy enthalpy of reaction. And this is the thermite reaction. Two moles of aluminum react with a mole of iron 3 oxide to form aluminum three oxide, and two moles of iron. Now we know, without looking anything up, that the heat of formation of aluminum is zero, and the heat of formation of iron is zero. So what we need is a table that gives us the heats of formation for the other two things. So go get your textbook, and in the back of your textbook, you have a whole table of thermodynamic properties. Different books call it different things, uh, but yours should be in the back. So go get your book, and we'll get this data. All right. Now, a lot of times, with 
these tables will actually give the data in alphabetical order. That's not always true, but it is true for the book I'm looking at. And so then I, I see that the heat of formation for Al203 in its solid state is minus 1676 kilojoules per mole. And let me flip to the next page. And for Fe203, Uh, let's see, Fe203 solid. I, ha I see the number of negative 826 kilojoules per mole. Alright, so we'll do this based on the numbers that we have. Alright, so we know the sum of, we want the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. Now for the reactants, uh, sorry, let's start with the product. That makes a lot more sense, all right? So what we have is one mole of Al2O3, one, sorry, one times minus 1676, close those parentheses, minus, I'm leaving out the zero because it's not necessary here, minus the negative 826, times the coefficient for the Fe2O3. I can put the zero in if I want to, um, just to be complete. Probably not a bad idea. And at this point, what I need to do is get out my calculator and just do the math. But even before that, it's negative 1676 minus negative 826. And of course, if you're subtracting negatives, that's all going to turn around. So let's just get out our calculator and then we'll write in our answer. So when I did this out, I got an answer of negative 850 kilojoules. Now I do know that this is a very exothermic reaction. Sometimes when this reaction occurs, there's so much energy that the iron actually ends up molten. And so this negative sign is consistent with that. It's a large value. So this seems like a reasonable answer. All right, and this is the overall enthalpy that I calculated for this reaction. Let's go on and look at a second problem, which is also a very typical problem type using enthalpies of formation. All right, so it says the standard enthalpy of the combustion of ethane gas is negative 14 11.1 kilojoules per mole at 298 Kelvin. Given the following enthalpies of formation, calculate the enthalpy of formation for ethane gas. Now the first thing we want to do is write out a balanced equation. We can't do anything without that. So C2H4 plus O2, we know it's a combustion reaction, we're going to get CO2 and H2O. We've got to have it balanced, and you should be able to write a combustion reaction like this in your sleep and get it balanced. So two carbons, uh, H4, so two H2Os, that's one, four, five, six oxygen, so three O2s. So I've balanced the equation, and this is what we're going to work with. Now this problem, you might notice, is a little bit different. We are given the overall enthalpy change. And we're given the heats of formation for two of these, but not the third. So we know the CO2, we know the H2O, of course oxygen we know the enthalpy of formation is zero. And so we need to find the enthalpy of formation of the other reactant. So this problem is a little bit different in the sense that we're not solving for the overall, but the general process is the same. Still, the overall enthalpy of reaction is the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. We have to take those coefficients into account naturally. So let's um, certainly set this up. We know that the overall enthalpy of reaction is minus 1411.1 kilojoules. And let's work on the products. We have two CO2s. So 393.5 times 2 plus 2 H2Os, all right, and then we have to subtract out the reactants, all right, so we have X plus 0. 
All right, at this point, it's just an algebra problem, and we need to solve for x. So let's just do it, okay? So negative 1411.1. Uh, let me get my calculator here. 290. Woo! 393.3 times 2. All right, so that's negative 786.6. Now the other thing is you don't necessarily need to show all this math. Your calculator can take care of a lot of this for you, whether you're using a graphic calculator or just an ordinary scientific calculator. Um, and let it do that. You can just go right to the answer. All right. All right. And then 2 times 285.8. All right, so that's negative 571. minus x. All right. uh, we'll leave out the zero, obviously we don't need that. And we just need to simplify here. All right, so let's, let's do some summation here. That's negative 1357.6. minus x. All right, so let's combine here. So negative x, if I add 1357 to each side, negative x comes out, I get negative 53.5. And so when I take care of my signs there, I get it, um, the enthalpy of formation to be equal to 53.5 kilojoules per mole. Now, even if my math turned out to be not quite correct here, I certainly used the correct procedure, right? The process is sound, and that's actually as important as anything else. Minor math errors, of course, we don't want you to make them. Nobody wants to make minor math errors, but better a minor math error where you show your understanding um, than to not know how to do the problem. And so this is our final answer. I hope you found this helpful, and we'll talk another time.